Hi, beautiful soul. Welcome to today's video. My name is Emily, also known as Emily the Mystic. And as always, I'm so excited for today's video because we're talking all about spirit guides, which is one of my favorite topics in the spiritual space because I work <laughs> every single day, not just with my own spirit guides, but with the spirit guides of my clients as well. So I'm going to be sharing a lot of information in this jam-packed video for you to learn more about your spirit guides, who they are, how they help you, why they chose to help you, and how you can start working with them in little ways right away today. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Of course, always these videos come with a disclaimer that the information that I share is channeled and it's also based off of my own experience working as an intuitive, as a psychic. And so therefore take whatever resonates with you from this video and leave anything that doesn't. I know this information is not what we are taught in school. I am an advocate and would love for this information to be be taught in school because it's so important. And I hope that you take this information today and allow it to empower you with whatever you have going on in your life. So I really want you to know right now in this moment that you are never alone. Truly, you are never ever alone because you have a whole entourage of spirit guides who are helping you, assisting you, and supporting you every single step of the way. I've done a whole series of videos about different types of spirit spirit guides that are on your team, such as spirit animals or angels or ascended masters. But today I'm really focusing on the spirit guides themselves. Um, and I'll explain to you more what that means and how these, these guides are differentiated from ascended masters, for example, or from spirit animals so that you can learn more about who they are and why they are here to help you. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be sharing some fun ways that you can start working with them immediately right now today. So first of all, there's a really important topic that we need to talk about. Actually, I should say it's a really important principle that we need to talk about, which is that we here on Earth live in a universe that has the universal law of free will. So we are governed by this universal law of free will, which I'm sure you're familiar with this, but it means that we are all self-guided to make our own decisions and choices. We all have the power in our own hands to make unlimited decisions and choices from the perspective of unlimited possibilities. So with that in mind, we cannot be forced into doing anything ever or be have some energy or spirit guide forcing us to do things or some God in the sky who is forcing us to live our life in a specific way because we chose to come here on earth and know that we have we are working with this beautiful universal law of free will so we can do whatever we want <laughs> truly we can do whatever we want um and so with that in mind this is really important because our spirit guides cannot act on our behalf or communicate with us consciously without our permission okay and with that in mind, you must consciously call in your spirit guides and give them permission to work with you. This is one of the first things that I teach my beginner intuitive students so that they know that they may have felt connected, disconnected, I should say, from their spirit guides up until this point because they haven't been telling their guides that it's okay to work with them. They haven't been giving them that permission to be able to come in. And yes, your guides have already been helping you, assisting you, and supporting you throughout your whole life up until, in, up until this point. But the way that I like to describe this concept is it's almost like you're in a video game. Think of yourself as being in a video game where that video game has little hints and there's this hint mode that you can turn on where you receive a little hint about what to do next in the game right? That's sort of how your spirit guides have been working with you up until this point. They've been give, giving you little hints in the form of intuitive nudges, for example, um, to be able to work with you and to be able to give you guidance. But when you actually give them that permission slip to work with you on a daily basis or to come in into your field and communicate with you, that's when you can create this beautiful two-way direct communication. And that's when they're going to start giving you more direct guidance, more direct help, um, and they're going to support you at an even deeper level when you do give that permission. 
course, you can't do this until you know that they exist, right? So now that you know that they exist, you have that ability to give them that permission slip to be able to work with you more consciously. So just keep that in mind. Again, they have been supporting you up until this point. You know, you wouldn't be where you are today without them because they have been nudging you in little ways throughout the course of your whole life. But again, those nudges have been more of a hint than an actual clear picture of, okay, here's some real actionable guidance that you can follow. All right, so with all of that in mind, how can we give them permission to work with us? All you really need to do is just to set the intention before you start your day to call in your spirit guides. I give you permission to start to work with me. And that's all you need to do. That's all you need to do is to give them that clear statement that you are granting them permission. They hear you, they're listening, they know what's going on, um, and they will take that on and start to work with you more directly. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you a way to know that they are around you. So we'll get to that in a moment, but I do want to share some more information about who your spirit guides are so you can understand what their role is and what they're here to do and also what they're not here to do. So in terms of spirit guides, we all have at least one. One is usually the most common number. One main spirit guide who is with you for your entire life. So this particular spirit guide contracted or chose, kind of they, they signed a soul contract to be with you throughout, throughout your entire life from the moment that you incarnated here, so from the moment that you were born until the moment that you pass away or move on to your next stage of consciousness when you die in this lifetime, of course. And so your one main spirit guide has chosen to be with you throughout it all. They are here from your baby phase all throughout your time in school till your young adult years, till when you are have perhaps having a family of your own or not, um, till your senior citizen years and so on and so forth. And this spirit guide is a really special energy to you because they have been with you for lifetimes. The reason why they chose to work with you in this lifetime is because you have known them from past lives. And for whatever reason, it, with their own soul's evolution and development in mind, they wanted to experience an incarnation as a spirit guide without a physical body in order to be able to learn something and evolve more deeply as a soul. So they it's a back and forth relationship. They are not, you know, doing this out of the goodness of their heart. Of course they are. They unconditionally love you. But at the same time, like they are learning and growing as a soul as they are helping you from a different dimension, from a different plane. And they're assisting you being this physical being here on Earth. So it's a really cool learning process for both them and for you. And of course, you're going, you can communicate with them in this lifetime. But unfortunately, when that day comes, when you do pass away, you're going to reconnect with them on the other side and go over like, did we set, did we accomplish what we set out to do? Was the guide able to give you the information and the help and guidance that you needed? Or maybe it wasn't as clear of a relationship. Maybe there were some some things that you didn't get to in this lifetime that you're leaving to take on in a different lifetime. Or maybe there's some past karma that you need to revisit or re-experience in a future lifetime. So you're going to meet with your spirit guide to talk about all of that during your lifetime in between lives. So when you are on the other side, we call that a life between life review. Um, and so they are helping and assisting you throughout the whole process of all of that. And again, and they are also learning something at the same time. So the difference between spirit guides and angels, for example, is that spirit guides lived here on earth as physical beings at one point or another. So they have had lifetimes as human beings. They know what it's like to be here. They know what it's like to live this human experience, this human incarnation. Um, angels, for example, have not usually, of course, I'm not going to say ever, um, but most angels have not had an experience living in a human physical body 
body here on earth. They are non-physical beings. Um, it's just a different energy frequency, right? It's a different type of consciousness. So that's the difference between angels and spirit guides. For example, spirit guides do not have a physical body, but they have at one time incarnated here on earth and have lived in physical form. Same with ascended masters. And the difference between spirit guides and ascended masters is such that spirit guides are not consciously as evolved as ascended masters. So they have not perhaps lived as many lifetimes. They perhaps haven't gotten to that point in their own soul's evolution process to be able to move along and end their physical lifetimes here on earth. So spirit guides may re reincarnate as physical beings at some point, uh, whereas ascended masters aren't going to do that. They've moved on, they've evolved. If you want to learn more about that, make sure you go check out my video about Ascended Masters and also my video about angels as well for more information about those topics. But spirit guides, again, they have incarnated here on Earth, and that's why they are here to help you, because they know what it's again, they know what it's like to be here and they want to assist you every single step of the way with this process. It's a really special relationship. Perhaps they've been a mother to you or a father or a romantic partner to you in other lifetimes or maybe even all of those roles. They are within your soul family. They're a soul family member. So you have such a deep bond with them. Who wouldn't want to learn who this guide is, right, in this current lifetime? So um, so super, it's super, super cool. And depending on your soul's unique frequency, too, your spirit guides may come through to you in more of a physical human-like form, for example, with a human-like name, with a human-like appearance, when if you are doing some meditation and you're able to connect with them and see them in your mind's eye. Um, that is the, the, the case for me with my intuitive gifts. But for you, especially when you're first learning, you may just experience them on an energetic level. You may just sense their presence, feel their energy, feel that unconditional love and support and feel them with you. Um, and it's interesting to me, too, because when I work with clients, not all of my client spirit guides will come in in a very physical form. Some will come in more in a frequency, more in an energy. So if you want to learn more about your specific main spirit guide, of course, I really encourage you to develop your own practice to connect with them in meditation. If you're not sure how to do that, make sure you check out my video all about psychic protection and discernment because there's a lot of information about how to do that in there. But if you want to learn more about them and discover your past lives with them, I definitely encourage you to book an Akashic Records reading, whether it's with me or with another Akashic Records reader or somebody who does spirit guide readings because they'll be able to give you more information about all of that. Um, and another really interesting thing to note too, your spirit guides reside in the fifth and sixth dimensional frequency. Of course, that's not a physical place. It's a metaphysical place. It's an energetic space and time. And so in those planes of existence, they don't experience time like we do here in the physical world. So they're kind of operating on a different timeline and a different energetic consciousness than we are here. So it's a little bit of a different dynamic uh, being a spirit guide in that non-physical incarnation than it is to be here on Earth. OK, so why are your spirit? Why is your spirit guide helping you? And before I even talk about that, I do want to note that, yes, you have one main spirit guide who has been with you throughout your entire life, but you also have a team of other spirit guides who, are, who come and go, depending on what you're going through in your life. So you've got the one main guide who's with you throughout everything, but you are also going to have perhaps a few spirit guides who come in when you're a child to support you in childhood. You may have spirit guides come in who assist you when you're in college, for example, or when you're in those young adult years of your life. Um, you may have spirit guides who come in when you are a mother or a father or a parent. And then you may have spirit guides who come in when you are a senior citizen, when you are getting ready, when you're older, for example. So you have spirit guides who come and go back and forth and who aren't always with you throughout your entire life. So it is important to note that you do have a team of all of these guides and that it's just it's not just you and your one main spirit guide, although they really are dedicated to helping you support your mission and pur purpose here on Earth. And they do want me to clarify, too, that 
they are only working with you. So your main spirit guide isn't working with 10 other people, for example, they have only contracted to work with you. So just in case if that question was popping up in your mind, they're only working with you. But some of these other guides that come kind of come and go um, throughout your ages and life stages, they may be working with other people as well. So, and of course, we are all here to enjoy this experience. And so I don't want you to think, you know, it's better or worse that that some of your some of your spirit guides may be working with other people. Okay, before we move on, quick water break here. All right. So why are they helping us besides the fact that it is this back and forth mutual relationship and that they are learning something from us, from from this experience? Their purpose specifically is to help you succeed in your mission and purpose here on Earth. They want to see you succeed. You came here with a plan. You created a plan for yourself before you came into this lifetime. It's called your soul contract. And that contract contains all of the different experiences and things that you wanted to accomplish while you are here. It's very complicated, actually. It kind of blows my mind when you think about it. So they want to assist you in actually accomplishing that contract. They want to assist you in setting up, they want to assist you in accomplishing everything that you wanted to do, create, feel, see, be etc. while you are here, including meeting the specific people that you're meant to meet in this lifetime, specific jobs that you're meant to have, roles that you're meant to have, etc. etc. So they're sort of helping you from behind the scenes. The best way they're giving me a visual right now of them sort of being like, if we are thinking of um, a play, they are the stage hand behind the curtains in the play, who is kind of directing everybody and they're setting up the stage and they're making sure that everything runs smoothly. That's what your spirit guide is for you. Okay, so with all of that in mind, they want to see you succeed. They're cheering you on every step of the way. They're like, yes, oh my gosh, she got out of bed today and she brushed her teeth and she made her bed and she's going to work. Yes, that's phenomenal. We're so happy for her. We're so excited. They're celebrating you even in the smallest moments because they know how hard it is to be in a physical body and to have density like we do here on earth. They are full of so much unconditional love for you. They are constantly cheering you on from above. So the reason why I really want to emphasize that is because I want you to know that they are never judging you. They are never wishing ill will on you. They are never judging you for being a sinner or they are never wanting to make you feel guilty or shameful for living your human life. I'm just going to pause for a moment and let that sink in. <laughs> they want you to live the full human experience. And living that human experience means feeling some of those more negative, or should I say, denser energies and emotions, such as guilt, shame, blame. But they are not specifically casting guilt, shame, or blame onto you. Okay? They are never judging you. They're not writing a list of all of your sins <laughs> or keeping tabs on, oh, well, is, did she have too many glasses of wine with dinner? Shame on her. <laughs> no, that's not how it is. They, <laughs> no. <laughs> no matter what, they are always going to love you and support you. And of course, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what about that person who is a serial killer or who hurts other people? We always want to know that those those perpetrators are, uh, you know, going to a, a worse place than us. Um, all I can say to that note is that those people do have their own team of spirit guides, but they are obviously not listening and that those guides are probably just like, well, we did what we could to try to steer them on a better path, but this person ultimately has the law of free will at their disposal and they are making those decisions and choices. And we're going to talk about that in their life between life review. But until that point, there's nothing that we can do, right? 
So they are not actively controlling you. They are not forcing you to do anything. They're never pushing you to do anything, okay? And I think that is also really important to know. Um, they're never gonna tell you that you have to do something or that you can't do something. If you ever are working, you feel like you're consciously working with an energy, a guide, a spirit who is giving you in instructions in a way that makes you feel forced or like you're forced to act on things or that you have to do things a certain way or you feel pressured to do things, that is not a spirit guide. <laughs> that is a negative energy, unfortunately who has come into your field and it's best that you see somebody who can help you to release that energy from your field all right so i want you to know that if you ever feel uncomfortable when you start to work with spirit guides uncomfortable meaning not out of your comfort zone but meaning like you're experiencing negative feelings and emotions because they are hurting you or making you feel bad that's not a spirit guide unfortunately so any of those negative energies, we want to get them out of your field. So you can definitely check out my energy cleansing vi uh, video about that. But I do want you to do some searching to find a practitioner who can help you to clear negative energies from your field. That's not something that I specialize in, but there are a lot of people out there who do. Okay, so the other important thing to note with all of this is that you can tell your spirit guides no. <laughs> you don't have to follow their nudges or their hints of guidance. You don't have to do anything that they say. You ultimately, you have the power of free will at your disposal. So if your intuition is nudging you to go right and you just know that you want to go left, you can go left. That is up to you and you alone and your own discernment. But of course, they are here to help us make our lives as easy and joyful as possible. They want you to enjoy your, your life experience here on Earth. And if everything is constantly going wrong, if everything feels chaotic, if you constantly are finding yourself in one pickle after another, it's probably because you're not on the path that you're meant to be on. And your spirit guides are probably trying to nudge you from behind the scenes to take a different route, to try something else, to make a different choice, to reframe your beliefs, to find a practitioner who can help you with that. And they want to see you make those changes so that you don't have to live in that state of chaos anymore. <laughs> okay, super, super, super important. They're trying to nudge you away from that path. Life can be easy, it can be joyful, it can be expansive, but you have to, that's a choice. You have to make that choice. So, all right, I hope you have enjoyed all this information about Spirit Guides so far. Before we end the video, I do want to share a couple of ways that you can start to work with your Spirit Guides today and learn about more about them and who they are. So number one, I want you to carve out just a few moments of quiet space and time, perhaps even while you're listening to this video, get yourself in a comfy spot. You can do this either sitting or lying down. I want you to close your eyes, just take a couple of deep breaths just to settle your energy. We'll just take a moment. And as you continue to breathe deeply, I want you to set the intention, whether in your mind or out loud, you can speak this out loud. I set the intention to call in my spirit guide team. I give them permission to work with me. I set the intention to call in my spirit guide team. I give them permission to work with me. And once you have said that, whether out loud or in your mind, Next, I want you to set the intention. And you, again, you can say this out loud or in your mind. I set the intention to ask my spirit guides to wrap me up in a cozy blanket of unconditional love. I want to feel your presence. I repeat that one more time. I set the intention to ask my spirit guides to wrap me up in a cozy blanket of unconditional love. I want to feel your presence. And just sit back in that moment and allow yourself to feel this energy. They're wrapping you up in that cozy, soft blanket, the softest blanket you've ever felt. 
and they are filling you with so much unconditional love in this moment. So breathe it in and be in this energy. Stay here for as long as you like. You're welcome to pause the video if you're really feeling the experience. And if not, you're welcome to come back and join me on screen. So that's just a quick way that you can start to feel the energy of your spirit guides being present with you. Now, I'd want to give you one more quick tip of how you can work with your spirit guides so that you can actually see in the physical world a tangible way that they can assist you. So we, there are spirit guides known as runner guides or helper guides who can help you to have your life run more smoothly, to live that life of ease and joy that I was just talking about. So these runner guides, also called helper guides, can help you find missing objects, they can help you to locate things, and they can help you to find resources. So these guides are fantastic with helping you find things like missing keys, the missing remote that's in your couch, uh, what else? They can help you to find parking spots if you live in a city. They can help you to find loose change if you need change for that little coin meter or for your laundry machine. So these guides can help you with all of these different little things that I have mentioned. So all you need to do is ask them. Set the intention right now. If you have a missing object, say you need to find your keys. Runner guides, I ask for your help in finding my missing car keys. Okay? And now I want you to see how this unfolds. You may see in your mind's eye where they're located. You may feel your body being guided to move in a specific location in your house. You may sense or just know intuitively where they are. Or perhaps if they are located somewhere that's not in your house, you may feel nudged to call someone who might have your keys, or you may feel nudged to go to a different location or to take some steps. Perhaps your keys are in your car. Maybe your car's not locked, but they're in your car, and you may need to follow that nudge to go check your car for your keys. So give this a try. It's really helpful. It's really useful. I have become a master of finding objects with the help of these amazing helper guides, these amazing runner spirit guides. So I hope you enjoyed this video, learned more about your spirit guides and sensed their presence today. I can't wait for you to start cultivating a deeper relationship with them. And I'm sending you so much love and luck on your journey. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content and let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway was and what you're most excited about when it comes to working with your spirit guides. Sending so much love and I'll see you in the next video.